All right, guys, it's finally time to review the AOK Zoe A1 handheld, and this has got to be the most frustrating review I've ever produced here on the channel. I've gone through three different versions of the script, and it's been difficult to balance, you know, entertaining you guys while still giving you honest feedback for this device. With every version of the script, three key topics kept coming to mind. Number one, the 6800U is an awesome processor. Number two, don't buy the AOK Zoe A1 handheld. And three, stay away from AOK Zoe. Now, I don't want this review to be a complete downer because on the inside, the AOK Zoe handheld actually performs just as well as I would hope. If you're new to the channel or you're not familiar with this type of device, let's do a brief rundown of the spec sheet. The star of the show is the Ryzen 7 6800U mobile processor. It combines AMD's famous Zen 3 Plus cores along with RDNA 2 integrated graphics. Its 8 CPU cores can boost up to 4.7 GHz, and the integrated GPU's 12 compute units can boost up to 2.2 GHz. Users can configure the processor's power limit between 4 and 28 watts in this small package through the AOK Zoe app. More on that app later in the video. As for the memory, AOK Zoe upgrades to LPDDR5 running at 6400 mega transfers per second, surpassing the Steam Deck's configuration to gain just a bit more of a competitive edge. For the different models, the A1 can come equipped with either 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes built into the platform. Storage is essential for a handheld device, and AOK Zoe provides options for 512GB, 1, and 2TB. However, if you want to void your warranty, you can swap in a standard 80mm NVMe drive at your own risk. And if that wasn't enough, an SD card slot is available for additional slower storage. Equally as important is the battery. Again, AOK Zoe makes a good call by offering 45 and 65 watt hour options. For me, I chose the higher capacity option for extended usage at higher TDP levels. The last upgrade for me was the joysticks. The standard joysticks are your typical resistive variety. Still, for a few more bucks, you can pick up Hall Effect based sensors, which eliminate dead zones in your sticks. Rounding out the spec is I.O. with a full-size USB 3.1 port, a USB Type-C port capable of power pass-through as well as display output, and a 3.5mm headphone jack. On the bottom, another Type-C port is available for data. Overall, the A1 spec sheet is a killer combination and this formula specifically has the power to dethrone the Steam Deck. With one hell of a spec sheet, the AOK Zoe A1 performs just as well as we would hope. I've tested 10 games at both 800p and its native 1200p resolution while comparing it against its older cousin, the One X Player Mini, powered by the previous generation's 5800U processor. Of course, I couldn't leave out the reigning champion, Valve's own Steam Deck. Okay, let's start with Forza Horizon 5. In the default 15 watt power state, the AOK Zoe A1 outperforms the Steam Deck by a lone 1 FPS while outclassing the deck by 34 percentage points in the 28 watt power mode. As for the One X Player Mini with the 5800U, the A1 beats it by 13 and 30% at 15 and higher wattage, respectively. Upping the quality to medium, that lead stretches to 10 and 43% compared to the deck, which is a solid win. Cyberpunk is strong with the Steam Deck, favoring Valve's handheld at 15 watts. But if we need the best performance, the AOK Zoe A1 can surpass it by a thin margin at 28 watts. Increasing the quality level continues to favor the Steam Deck, and for the A1, 28 watts is required for an equivalent playing experience. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a bit better for the A1, with the 15 watt mode falling by 11% while the 28 watt mode surges ahead by 26%. Borderlands 3 is child's play for the A1, with the 15 watt solution performing better than the Steam Deck. The 28 watt mode wins again, granted the margin is only 23%. With F1 2020 in DirectX 11, the One X and AOK Zoe handhelds firmly dominate the Steam Deck, with a 7 FPS win at 15 watts and 20 FPS at 28 watts. This just begs for the higher resolution gameplay on the 1200p screen. Horizon Zero Dawn shows tight competition between the A1 and the Steam Deck at 15 watts, and guys, we get a near fluid 60 FPS experience in the 28 watt mode. 
This type of performance just reiterates the massive improvements we see going from Vega with the 5800U to RDNA 2 with the 6800U. This same trend continues for Gears 5, Red Dead Redemption 2, as well as Assassin's Creed Valhalla, with the 15 watt mode lagging behind by a few frames. In contrast, the 28 watt mode wins by 26, 28, and 20 percentage points, respectively. For the most part, I've been enjoying playing Call of Duty's Modern Warfare 2 on the AOK Zoe A1, but I don't have that data for the Steam Deck, so I'm relying on ETA Prime's settings that he just posted in his latest videos and comparing my results to his. He tests Modern Warfare 2 with balanced quality settings, DRS enabled, and FSR engaged. I'm pleased to report that the AOK Zoe A1 can beat the deck by between 15 and 50%. However, that average frame rate is overshadowed by a choppy gaming experience. The A1's 1% lows are complete trash. I saw nothing but stutters throughout all of my gameplay. DRS has some issues when running on Windows, so I don't recommend running that feature with the A1. Basic quality settings with 1200p and FSR at balance mode gets my recommendation here. The TLDR here is that at 15 watts, the AOK Zoe A1 trades blows with the Steam Deck at 800p, and if you up the wattage to 28 watts, we surge ahead by 29 percentage points. And if we factor in the other four games that I didn't test with the older device, the performance statement still holds. Overall, like I said at the beginning of this segment, the 6800U performs just as well as we've been talking for the past few months. So how about battery life for the A1? For that, I'm going to be playing Project Zomboid. Guys, I can spend countless hours prepping up for the next zombie horde. On the left, we have the remaining battery capacity of the device. We have the charge rate on the right, or how fast the unit consumes energy. The left axis refers to the blue and orange lines, while the right relates to the gray and yellow lines. We see something pretty interesting during our extended Planet Zomboid playthroughs at 15 and 28 watts. On most handhelds, battery life is pretty linear throughout the entire charge cycle, but the A1 might be running into some issues. As time progresses, the device appears to consume more power than anticipated, regardless of the power mode. So it's estimated that at the 15 watt TDP setting, the AOK Zoe consumes about 26 watts for total system power. In the 28 watt mode, the device consumes nearly 44 watts. At 75% screen brightness, this translates into 1 hour and 20 minutes of battery life in the 28 watt mode. And at 15 watts, that's roughly 2 hours and 15 minutes. Keep in mind, I'm running with the 65 watt hour battery, so the smaller option will hit less than an hour of battery life at 28 watts and a bit under 2 hours with the 15 watt mode. Can the AOK Zoe handle some pretty decent emulation? Now, I don't have a large library at my disposal, but I can confirm ETA Prime's findings. Metroid Dread runs perfectly fine at 2x resolution, even at the 10 watt setting. As for Breath of the Wild with Simu, it's playable, but it definitely will need the additional wattage to get it running smoothly. So up to this point, the AOK Zoe A1 checks all of the boxes for me. It performs well, the battery life is what we would expect, and it can handle some pretty decent emulation. But what's it like to actually put your hands on the device and get to actual gaming? Grabbing the device, I'm a bit disappointed. I'm thrilled that AOK Zoe beefed up the grips on the back. That was one of my main issues with both of the versions of the One X player. The AOK Zoe grips though, they just don't provide that confident grip that the Steam Deck can satisfy. The balance in the hand is good, it's not too heavy for extended use, so that's a plus. After the device sinks into my hands a little bit, the plastic feels exceptionally cheap. The grips are incredibly slick and would have benefited from even the slightest of texture. The One X player has a bit more swagger in this regard, but that could just be me. After a few days of gameplay, the plastic has also started to separate from the housing a bit. The shell is starting to squeak at the bottom left side by the AMD sticker, and I'm also noticing some flexing at the top right corner by the shoulder buttons. For a device that costs upward of $1,000, this just isn't up to par, and even the Steam Deck at less than $600 is able to knock ergonomics out of the park. 
Next, the D-pad is garbage. I am by no stretch a controller snob, but when scrolling through the menus in Project Zomboid, it constantly triggered continuous down presses. That nearly resulted in some life-threatening situations on multiple occasions. Again, for a premium device, this is entirely unacceptable. I've been super excited to finally get my hands on some Hall Effect sensors since ETA Prime and the Fox just can't stop raving about them. There is effectively no dead zone with these sticks, which is a huge plus where stick drift can dramatically impact your gameplay. However, the sticks provide very little physical resistance and are way too sensitive for me. The Steam Deck or even the One X player sticks provide a much higher feedback. With those types of sticks, for me, it's just easier to play on. In Modern Warfare 2, I have to run ADS sensitivity at 0.5, which is far lower than most recommended settings. This could be my lack of exposure to Hall Effect joysticks, but at this point, I might even prefer the traditional sticks. If you manage to look past the controls of the AOK Zoe A1, within just a few minutes of gameplay, you'll definitely hear the obnoxious fan speed. It looks like the fan speed quickly ramps up to above 60% in standard usage, and at that point it sounds just like a jet engine. My wife constantly came up to my studio here to check on me, thinking that something might just be blowing up. I ran some fan speed experiments, and at 30 to 40% RPM, it's just not enough airflow to cool the device, but right at 50% might be the break even point. But as we increase to 60, 70, and up to 100% RPM, we just don't get that much effective cooling performance. And at the very top edge of the device, it starts to get extremely hot, which is kind of counterintuitive for the increased airflow. The only saving grace for me has got to be the display. I really enjoy the 8-inch display, and with 1200p as its native resolution, at my preferred viewing distance, the screen is super sharp. However, be careful about your game's clarity. When running some games like Apex Legends, I had to run the game in borderless windowed mode. When I ran in full screen, it turned out to be extremely blurry, and swapping that one setting alone was a complete game changer. As the PC handheld market continues to grow, companies are looking for extra ways to add more value to their equation, and for AOK Zoe, they include the AOK Zoe app. When pressing the turbo button on the device, it pops up a handy overlay that can control various device settings. Processor power budget, GPU frequency, fan speed, RGB settings, screen brightness, that sort of thing. As convenient as it is, it has several devastating downsides. While on the desktop, it operates as you would expect with controller inputs. When gaming, however, all key presses will translate to your current game. This can lead to less than desirable outcomes, so pause your game and hope for the best. On top of that, if you're playing any game with anti-cheat software running, it will likely get your account flagged. I can 100% confirm when playing Modern Warfare 2 and using the AOK -OK Zoe app, you will get shadow banned and your account will be put under review. Make sure you change all of your settings and close the app entirely before launching the game. But to push this review fully over the edge, we have to talk about AOK -OK Zoe's business practices and why future buyers shouldn't trust this company. If you've been following my channel for the past six months, you no doubt have heard that AOK -OK Zoe's Kickstarter campaign, it's been pretty bumpy. They initially claimed the A1 would be the first mass-produced unit to hit the market with a shipping date by the end of September 22. As we got closer to that last week of September, AOK -OK Zoe notified their backers that they had hit some delays and would be unable to ship units on time. On top of that, China had a national holiday that next week, so they told us no one would be able to ship units until the second week of October. After the delay came and went, the next issue was an egregious accounting failure. Apparently, AOK -OK Zoe's bank account information was incorrect, and Kickstarter failed to send the funds to them. At that same time, the units were being completed and sitting in their factory in China, waiting on AOK -OK Zoe to complete the payment. This took AOK -OK Zoe another two to three weeks to finally resolve, and the backers were left waiting there until late October. At least I got this extraordinary 16 gigabyte USB drive and this little keychain thing. While that was going on, AOK -OK Zoe was selling units to their China outlets. They were even accepting and shipping units from US Amazon pre-orders. 
As a backer, hearing this after the fact is A-OK -okay Zoe spitting in my face. They even sent notifications to their Amazon pre-orders asking them to not post videos of their devices onto Facebook or YouTube. They knew that this news would spread fast and it would upset their backers. And rightly so. Many Discord members executed chargebacks on their credit cards and said screw it. At that point, many believed fighting with their banks was worth not supporting this Chinese company. And suppose all of this Kickstarter drama is just not enough to tell you to not trust AOK -okay Zoe. Well, all you've got to do is look at their first batch of units from their Billy Billy reviews. From day one of China availability, users reported a variety of hardware issues, flickering screens, joystick recalibration issues, inability to update drivers, and other sorts of hardware failures. Most of these fixes will require all customers to return their units to the factory to get updated. In fact, after the financing fiasco, AOK -okay Zoe had to open up every single Kickstarter order and reflash software onto the device to fix known issues with various drivers and lower level ICs on the board. At that point, they no longer guaranteed a shipping date and even provided me with a tracking number that just didn't exist. Now that I'm having to go through the RMA process with my One X player, I'm actually glad that they opened up all the devices, because having to ship my device back to China, go through all of the different customs and all that stuff, it really is a pain in the patella. For the cherry on top of this review, I could be including some of my personal interactions with the people that work at AOK -okay Zoe, but to be honest, I think that's just a little bit too far. I think all of the actions that they've done publicly are proof enough that we shouldn't trust or buy their products. As much as we like to meme on Arthur from A and Neo, at least he's transparent with his company's plans and he delivers a well-designed product. I was willing to support AOK -okay Zoe to get my hand on this unit. Still, having gone through the entire process, I hope this is warning enough for you to avoid this product. I'm going to even take this a step further. With all the similarities between AOK -okay Zoe and One X Player, I think it's time to put one notebook on notice. I've now had two devices that I'm going through RMA with that, and to me, I just don't think I'm going to go with them anymore. And there you have it guys, that's my journey with the AOK -okay Zoe A1. I highly recommend that you avoid AOK -okay Zoe at all costs, and I recommend you do not purchase the A1. If you had your eyes on this device on Amazon, it's starting off at about $1,200, and at that price, it is a hard pass. I highly recommend you put that money elsewhere, go support a and Neo with their a and Neo 2 or their Geek, Ain has some really cool six inch devices that might be worth your time. But as always, you can also pick yourself up a Steam Deck. And that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Sorry it was a bit of a bummer, but I had to tell you guys the honest truth and I hope you all enjoyed it. So guys, hit thumbs up, share this video. But as always, thank you guys for sticking to the end. I hope you all have a good one. We'll catch you in the next one.